I found a text message on my girlfriend's phone, if you didn't have a boyfriend, could we get back together? She replied with one word, yes. I handed her the chat log, asking her to delete that man. She impatiently questioned me. He was just my first love. We were just reminiscing about our youthful days. Is that not okay? She thought I would still be the same as before, indulging her without limits, willingly being her simp. Until the next day, she found that I had moved out of our rented apartment and blocked her on WeChat. She panicked. A week ago, Colin got drunk and called my girlfriend. So my girlfriend, Gina, hurriedly left me, but that day was the day of my surgery. I anxiously waited in the hospital, enduring the pain, hoping to see her one more time before the surgery for some encouragement. But after finally reaching her on the phone, I heard her angrily shouting, Colin got drunk, I'm worried about his safety, don't call me if it's nothing important. Then the beep beep beep, busy signal followed. She was worried that her first love, her white moonlight, might be in danger from drinking too much, but she never thought that I, in the last moments before my surgery, was desperately hoping to hear even a word of encouragement from her. After coming out of the operating room, my whole body felt a sense of lost consciousness from the anesthesia. Looking at the empty ward, the empty mailbox and phone, my heart felt anesthetized too. I never got angry with Gina. In the past, no matter how Gina treated me, I was always obedient, in love as if it was the first day. But this time, I felt a bit tired. After being discharged from the hospital, I stayed at a friend's house and didn't return to the rented apartment I shared with Gina, until Gina found my friend's place bringing my favorite fruits and two movie tickets, she rarely gives me a way out. In the past, no matter how big my temper was, I had to calm myself down first and then go to coax her, regardless of who was right or wrong. This relationship had always been like this from the beginning. During gatherings with friends, they would always joke and tease me, calling me a love fool, but I always thought that as long as I cherished Gina enough, treating her with all my heart, she would eventually understand and cherish my sincerity. But this time, even though she came to give me a way out, she still did it with a righteous attitude. A grown man with such little tolerance. Didn't the surgery go well? Why can't you just give in like before? That one sentence made me realize that Gina perhaps always understood my sincerity. She knew, but in her heart, my sincerity was like dust, so she didn't cherish it. On the day of the surgery, as the anesthesia gradually took effect, I recalled our three years together. As I lost consciousness, I still remembered Gina's cruel words. Don't call me unless it's something important. In the end, I realized that in front of Colin, I, her current boyfriend, could be abandoned at any moment, even on the day of my surgery, when I was at my weakest, needing someone by my side the most, even knowing that I had decided to propose to her after the surgery, entering a new stage in our relationship, she still abandoned me without a second thought, I can't remember how many such incidents happened after Colin appeared in our lives, she only cared about whether Colin was happy, Colin getting drunk was a big deal in Gina's eyes but my need for companionship during surgery was laughed off as a lack of tolerance in a man. The difference was clear. In the end, I returned to the rented apartment with Gina. Due to work, I had many things to handle on my laptop, which was at home with Gina. As soon as I returned, I locked myself in the study to catch up on the work I had missed over the past few days, until Gina knocked on the door. Carlos, didn't you say last time that you had something important to do after the surgery? I was going to propose to Gina, and she knew it because a few weeks ago, I took her to choose a suitable diamond ring, the ring was big and bright, dazzling to the eyes, I thought it would please her, but Gina thought I was too conventional, when I wanted to present a gift to her, I always wanted to make sure it was suitable for her, that she liked it, but this could never compare to the surprises Colin gave her, I didn't speak in the study, and Gina continued on her own, if you don't speak, I'll use the key to come in, after this proposal, I'll go meet your parents with you, I had no choice but to reply helplessly, okay. If I had known before how much Gina valued my proposal, I would have been overjoyed. But this time, I felt an inexplicable resistance in my heart. Gina wanted me to book a table at her favorite restaurant, and we agreed to meet after work in the evening. But I waited until the restaurant closed, and Gina never came. During that time, I was worried about her safety and called her several times, but the line was always busy. Finally, I returned to the rented apartment. Through a closed door, I heard Gina's voice. She was singing. Her voice was light and soft. Gina sang beautifully. What first attracted me to her was her singing voice, but after we got together, no matter how much I begged her to sing, she never did. San, when we were together before, you always sang this song for me, do you remember? It turned out she was on the phone with Colin, and I heard his voice on the other end. Meanwhile, I got a notification from WeChat Moments. Colin had posted a new update. Today's like the past. Glad your voice and you are still here. He attached a video of Gina singing. Seeing this post, 
It happened to be midnight. The fireworks I had arranged for Gina were blooming outside the window, with a loud bang, lighting up the sky with a thousand colors. Brilliantly, Gina excitedly shouted into the phone, Colin, there's beautiful fireworks here. Wait for me to open the video to show you. As the fireworks extinguished, my heart turned to ashes. All the feelings vanished with the fireworks. Late at night, Gina knocked on the study door. I didn't want to respond, but she kept knocking. Eventually, I forced myself to open the door. Gina's eyes were slightly red, as if she had just been crying. She hurriedly walked in, wanting to throw herself into my arms, but I instinctively stepped aside. This action made Gina a bit angry. Carlos, what's wrong with you? The phone in her hand was still lit up, showing a WeChat chat window with a background of a close-up photo of her and Colin. I once humbly begged her to change that photo, but she argued with me, claiming I was too bothered by her past, and we had a big fight. In the end, I dared not bring it up again. I thought that by slowly helping her move on from that relationship, she would fall in love with me, and everything would eventually pass. But it's been three years, I was indeed a bit tired. I couldn't warm Gina's heart. Colin is having some financial difficulties. Can you help him? Seeing my silence, Gina still walked over and grabbed my hand, her tone much softer. After all, he's also our old classmate. I almost laughed, not even wanting to look at Gina. So on the night I was going to propose to you, you couldn't even notify me, ditching our date just to comfort your first love and sing to him. After you two reminisced about the past with such affection, you still want me to help him out. What do you take me for? After hearing my words, Gina, as usual, was still righteous. He called me saying he was in trouble. I couldn't just leave him aside, could I? I opened WeChat moments and showed her my phone. If he's in such financial trouble, how does he have the energy to post on WeChat moments to remind me of his existence? Gina, I'm very tired, and I have to work tomorrow. I pushed Gina out of the door, letting her accuse me of being heartless. To show her stance, Gina moved back to her own place. She took a lot of her belongings but didn't take Cowboy. Cowboy is Gina's dog. After we got together, he gradually became my dog. When he got sick, I took him to the vet in the middle of the night. I took care of all his daily needs. Before, when I held Gina and the dog, I would happily sigh about how good life was with the two of them, even though it was exhausting. After Gina moved out, I patted Cowboy's head, and he didn't seem to have any trouble adjusting. Well, I was the one taking care of Cowboy all along. Just when I thought life was settling down, Colin showed up. As a man, I don't think you need to treat Sen this way. I almost laughed. Sen. He called her so intimately, as if Gina was his girlfriend. How I treated Gina was none of his business. And besides, I had already given enough of my heart. I reached out to close the door, but Colin stopped me. If you don't treat Gina well, I don't mind taking her back. His words were full of provocation. I retorted harshly, addicted to coveting someone else's things, aren't you? As I expected, within minutes, Gina texted me saying we should break up. And Colin also sent a provocative message. She's not yours anymore. I turned off my phone, feeling overwhelmed by the noise. I still vividly remember the last time Gina said she wanted to break up. It started because I lost Gina's handmade bag. I had given Gina countless designer bags, but she cherished that one the most. After it was lost, she had a huge fight with me and heartlessly broke up with me. I thought it had a special meaning because she made it herself. So I stayed up several nights to make an identical one for her. But the difference was that I made this one more carefully, more complete, far better than the original rough one. When I presented the bag to Gina, she looked at it like it was a joke and stomped on it. Carlos, don't be so pathetic. No matter how well you make it, it will never be the same as that bag. She mocked me harshly, and I had to silently endure it. Later, I found out that the bag was precious to her because Colin gave it to her. And no matter how many expensive bags I gave her or how well I made one, it was all useless. Why did I have to be so self-degrading? After Gina moved out, I felt a peace in my heart that I had never experienced before. It was like my heart was still immersed in the anesthesia from the surgery, unable to wake up. Gina posted food pictures on her moments, while Colin posted her silhouette. She posted matching questions for Colin to answer, and Colin rated them a perfect score. They played these little games on their moments, enjoying them endlessly. The only feeling I had was that something was slowly peeling away from my heart, bit by bit, bloody but bringing an unprecedented sense of relief, until Gina's mother brought her to me. Gina didn't look well. She must have been forced by her mother. Colin came along too, probably following Gina. Despite the conflicts between Gina and me, I had no reason to be disrespectful to her elders. I respectfully invited them in. When Colin entered, I gave him a cold glance. Uninvited. No reason to be here. Gina looked displeased. I am also the owner here. I invited him. I was stunned. Even in front of the elders who knew about our relationship, she did not hide her defense of Colin. During dinner, 
Considering Gina's mother's taste, I made several spicy dishes. When I brought the dishes to the table, Gina thoughtfully brought a bowl of water. I remembered then that Colin was a native southerner and couldn't eat spicy food, but it also reminded me of when Gina mocked me for being a man who couldn't handle spicy food, so I forced myself to eat spicy food to suit her taste, even though it upset my stomach, but it turns out that true love doesn't require you to change yourself. Colin couldn't eat spicy food, and Gina naturally prepared a bowl of water for him, but she never cared that I needed to avoid spicy food after my surgery. My efforts turned out to be a joke. Colin smiled as he pulled the bowl of water towards him and said meaningfully to me, San is always so considerate, she was indeed considerate, but not to me. I understood Colin said that to provoke me, but I didn't care anymore. After a dinner party, Gina's mother forced her to stay, her mother thought highly of me, so every time we fought, she would play the mediator, and Gina would go along with it. This was a scenario I was all too familiar with. After her mother left, I went to feed Cowboy as usual, who would have thought that when I opened the door. Cowboy bolted out of the room. On the sofa, Gina and Colin were discussing something happily, laughing uncontrollably. It was obvious that Cowboy's appearance disrupted their atmosphere. Cowboy seemed to sense a dangerous and unfamiliar presence, growling at Colin. Colin laughed, pointing at Cowboy. This must be Carlos's dog, right? That laugh carried a hint of mockery. His dog is just like him, keeping everyone at a distance. But before he could finish laughing, Cowboy seemed to understand and lunged at him. Colin let out a scream his hand already scratched, in my heart, I was cheering for Cowboy, but instead, Cowboy let out a yelp as Gina kicked him hard, what was worse, she was wearing the high heels I had recently bought her, I quickly ran forward to protect Cowboy, who was terrified and trembling at my feet, he looked up at me with tearful eyes, filled with a silent plea, I understood, he wasn't in pain just because he was kicked, but because the person who hurt him was Gina, his once beloved owner, for a moment, my heart felt like it was being torn apart, Carlos, it bit someone. Why are you still protecting it? Gina looked at me coldly, her eyes burning with anger towards me and Cowboy. In some ways, I felt very similar to Cowboy. Truly similar. At least when it came to Colin. We were both the ones abandoned. Turning around, Gina put on a different face. With a look of concern, she rolled up Colin's sleeve, suppressing the rising anger within me. I picked up Cowboy and started to leave. Unexpectedly, Gina continued to chase after us. She whispered, you should give it away soon. It felt like a bucket of cold water was poured over me. Sorrow overwhelmed me more than heartbreak. That's what it meant. Covering Cowboy's ears, I turned back and yelled. Gina, that's enough. Maybe because I had never been so fierce with her. Gina looked at me in disbelief. Under her stunned gaze, I walked out, carrying Cowboy. Without looking back, I took Cowboy to the vet. And fortunately, the doctor said he was just startled and wasn't seriously hurt. On the way back, Cowboy seemed to sense something continuously nuzzling his head against my face. I tried several times to smile at him, but I couldn't. Memories of everything that had happened between Gina and me flashed through my mind. Gina, she isn't worth it. Since that's the case, there's no need for me to persist. When I got home, Colin was already gone. Gina was sitting in a corner of the living room. She wasn't wearing shoes and ran over to me barefoot when she saw me, trying to take Cowboy into her arms. But Cowboy hid in my arms as soon as he saw her. I didn't have the energy to deal with her and walked inside after taking off my shoes. Carlos. Gina called out to me, you never used to treat me like this. I smiled without turning back, but you've always treated me this way. Back in the study, I turned on my phone, and a few housing ads popped up. How timely. In fact, after that surgery, I started looking at houses near my workplace. The reason I hadn't taken action was because I was waiting. Maybe waiting for Gina to completely let me down. I didn't know. I just knew that I wanted to escape this little nest with Gina as quickly as possible. Perhaps because my attitude was different this time. Gina finally couldn't stand it anymore. She opened the study door and lay down beside me. Just as she reached out to hold me, I turned away. At that moment, a message from Colin popped up on her phone beside her. Miss you. The photo was still the same. It used to feel like a thousand needles stabbing me, but now it just seemed ridiculous. I reached out, grabbed her phone, opened the message, and started scrolling up. I just wanted to see how far these two could go. Their chats were casual but filled with a strong desire to share everything. Colin was everywhere in Gina's life. I was just too blind to see it. Scrolling further up, there was another conspicuous and heartbreaking message. If you didn't have a boyfriend, could we get back together? So shameless, so disgusting. And Gina's short reply was even worse. Yes, this message was sent right before Gina broke up with me. Gina seemed a bit guilty as she reached out to take her phone from me, her face remaining calm. Carlos, let's not fight, okay. I sneered and handed her the chat log, fine, then delete him. Gina, 
feeling exposed, took the phone and impatiently questioned me. He was just my first love. We were just reminiscing about our youthful days. Is that not okay? I nodded in agreement. If it was so beautiful and he's still around, why reminisce? Wouldn't it be better to rekindle that beauty? If it was so wonderful, then stop making me sick. I moved out of the place I shared with Gina, quickly finding an apartment in the city, previously, to let Gina sleep an extra half hour in the morning. We rented a house far from the city because her workplace was in a remote suburban area, but now, I northwest longer have to drive two hours round trip every day, feeling exhausted from driving and then coming home to work on project proposals. This feeling is wonderful. I also blocked Gina on WeChat before. She was the one always blocking me. I wonder how she feels now seeing that red exclamation mark. Of course, I don't have the energy to care. Recently, the company secured a big deal. And as the main person in charge, I've been incredibly busy. Finally, one weekend, Gina's best friend called me. She said something serious had happened in Gina's family and she wanted to see me. Although I didn't fully believe her, I felt that Gina and I indeed needed to meet one last time. To put an end to this relationship and uproot these three years of emotions completely, with no lingering ties. When I arrived at Gina's house, she was cooking, something she never did when I was around. She looked much more haggard, with swollen eyes indicating she had cried a lot. Gina's father had been framed for extortion and imprisoned. After multiple unsuccessful appeals, her mother fell ill and was hospitalized. As Gina told me these things, I felt a heavy weight in my heart. I realized that ending this relationship wasn't as simple as I had thought. I pulled some strings to hire the best lawyer and accompanied Gina to the hospital to see her mother. For a month, I ran back and forth between the hospital and the court. I thought that with such serious matters, Colin would be by Gina's side, but I didn't see him once during that month. It wasn't until the day Gina's father was exonerated that Colin finally showed up. At the hospital, standing from a distance, I couldn't hear what they were saying. I only saw Gina's agitated emotions, likely saying some accusatory words. She had never had a heated argument with Colin before. This was the first time, but I just stood there, holding a cup of coffee, watching silently from afar. It no longer concerned me. After their conversation, Colin left, and Gina approached me. Her eyes were red, and after a long pause, she finally said, Carlos, I'm sorry. Those three words, I'm sorry, are so light, so easy to say, but I endured immense pain. During these days, my heart was cut open, shattered, ground down, and finally reassembled. That apology was the last thing I needed. I took Gina back home. As I was about to leave, she suddenly rushed forward and hugged me. She wanted me to bring Cowboy back to live with her. Her tone was full of pleading. She was as humble as I used to be, but I couldn't let her experience what I had, because I knew how painful that was. I comforted Gina, had her sit down, and promised that if she needed help in the future, she could ask me, but Gina's tears wouldn't stop. So, I went to the room to get her some tissues. Upon entering the study, I was stunned. The layout was completely different. The succulents I kept on the windowsill were gone, replaced by basketball-themed curtains. The whole room was filled with a men's cologne I had never smelled before. Next to the bookshelf was a pair of leather shoes. They were Collins. I recognized them. He had posted about them on his moments, saying they were a meticulously chosen birthday gift from Gina. I just stood there for a moment, then grabbed the tissues from the desk. I should have known. Gina appeared behind me, calling my name softly, seeming a bit at a loss, hastily explaining. Didn't I tell you Colin was having financial troubles, while you were moved out? I thought the study was just sitting empty. I turned around and handed her the tissues, but her tears had already dried. Remember to have Colin transfer me the rent, then I left without looking back. Gina started showing up frequently outside my office building. At lunch, she would bring homemade meals to my desk, and after work, she would wait for me at the main entrance. The meals were authentic spicy dishes, despite my many refusals. She continued, one time, while getting coffee. I overheard my colleagues whispering, how strange, we've known Carlos for so long, and this is the first time we've seen his girlfriend, yeah, he used to only post about her on WeChat moments, but we've never seen her at the office, I walked over and corrected them, she's not my girlfriend anymore, I used to like showing up at Gina's workplace, driving over during her lunch break to eat with her, bringing flowers to pick her up after work, I thought all girls like that, but Gina thought I was too clingy, not giving her enough personal space and she told me not to come to her workplace anymore, until one day, I found out the real reason was that Colin was there, I was insanely jealous, but Gina only said, Colin doesn't suffocate me like you do, thinking about this, I almost laughed, she always justified her lack of boundaries so grandiosely, even righteously, another time after work, it started raining heavily, I sent the completed project to my boss for review and prepared to leave, a female colleague asked if I minded walking with her since she didn't have an umbrella, 
I knew this colleague. She was quiet and from the marketing department. If it were before, I would have refused, fearing Gina might overthink it. But now, I just felt it was a simple favor. I agreed and walked with her. Stepping out of the company door, I saw Gina waiting there. She looked somewhat displeased, even a bit accusatory. But she still approached. I drove here. I can give you a ride home. I raised the umbrella in my hand and said, no need. Besides, I've already agreed to help someone else. After getting home, Gina sent me a text. She said she now understands how I felt back then. I didn't reply. She wouldn't understand. Her feelings are far from a fraction of what mine were. Life went on as usual, with Gina continuing to do the same things, making lunchboxes and waiting for me after work. She even started to care about Cowboy, which was rare. She would ask what brand of dog food Cowboy liked, buy various toys for him, and even took on the task of walking him. So, she was capable of doing all these things. Then what was it before? In front of Colin, she chose to ignore both me and Cowboy. I never thought there would come a day when Gina and I would reverse roles. But facing her enthusiasm, I couldn't muster any energy and was tired of dealing with it. Finally, on a rainy night, she appeared at my door in a sexy dress, soaking wet, seemingly having had some drinks, and started pouring out countless feelings of longing. It was then that I realized this should end. Fearing she might catch a cold, I let her in, gave her a towel, and prepared some ginger tea. I hoped that when this relationship ended, we could both leave with some dignity. Carlos, you still care about me, right? Gina lay half reclined on the sofa, looking at me with a dreamy expression, her eyes filled with indescribable emotions, but I couldn't meet her gaze. I knew very well what it felt like to care. It was those restless nights, tossing and turning with anxiety. It was being so sensitive that every little move Gina made would tug at my heartstrings. It was choosing to give, despite being covered in wounds, but it wasn't this feeling now. Before I could speak, Gina's phone lit up. I didn't mean to look, but the phone kept vibrating. It was the same old story, the screen showing a photo of Gina and Colin, with Gina smiling so happily. I forced a smile and gestured for Gina to answer. Looks like you should take care of your own matters first. That day, I insisted on driving Gina home. After handling all the company matters, I took a leave of absence to avoid seeing Gina again, but Gina was relentless. She texted, called, and even reached out to my friends. In the end, she contacted my parents. I had mentioned Gina to my parents many times before, always praising her to leave a good impression. My parents were eager to meet my girlfriend, but Gina never agreed. I had begged Gina to meet my parents once. She always said she didn't have time and to wait a little longer. That wait lasted two years. Later, I realized she just didn't want to meet my parents. She had time to go on dates with Colin under the guise of friendship. Time to accompany Colin to his favorite basketball games. But no time to visit my parents with me. When my parents arrived, Gina was with them. It looked like Gina had charmed them, making them very happy. As they entered, my parents had smiles on their faces. During dinner, Gina maintained the image of a good girlfriend, serving me food and talking about my habits like she knew them by heart, making jokes to entertain my parents. God knows how much I had longed for this scene, but now, it filled me with dread. After dinner, I pulled Gina into the room. Now that we finished eating, you should go home and don't contact my parents again. Gina was stunned and then became agitated. She didn't expect me to be so heartless. Carlos, just because of what happened with Colin, you're shutting me out completely. Didn't you used to tolerate and forgive me? As soon as the words left her mouth, she realized she had said something wrong and stopped. But in my mind, I could already hear the next words she wanted to say. Why can't you continue to tolerate me now? Why can't you continue to watch as my balance tips towards Colin while still pampering me, letting me do as I please? Why can't you continue to watch me reminisce about my first love's sweetness, getting jealous and losing your mind? Why can't you just bear with me a little longer? So, she knew all along. She knew I was tolerating her, which is why she kept pushing my limits. She knew about boundaries but kept crossing them because she thought I could take it, hurting me repeatedly. That's why, when I was facing surgery alone, knocking on death's door, she was with her drunk first love, not even calling me once that night. That's why she could reminisce about her shameless sweet past right in front of me. With a loud bang, I shoved Gina out and slammed the door shut. Only then did the world feel quiet. In the following days, as I wished, Gina didn't disturb my life, but Colin frequently sent me messages. It was nothing more than updates about Gina's condition. Gina locked herself in our old apartment every day, refusing to see anyone. She neither ate nor drank, her complexion deteriorating rapidly. After one of Colin's calls, I heard Gina's weak voice in the background. Carlos, I want to see you one last time. My heart raced, fearing she might do something drastic, so I hurriedly drove to the location Colin had sent. Upon arrival, 
I realized it was the park where Gina and I had our first date. Here, I had solemnly confessed my love to her, promising to love and protect her. But time had passed, and the old park had been renovated, replaced by towering buildings. The old playground equipment was still there but abandoned in a corner, worn out and lifeless, no longer filled with the vitality and joy of the past. Just like my feelings for Gina, Gina seemed to have aged overnight. Seeing her condition, I realized Colin's messages were true, but I didn't feel heartache. Instead, I felt guilt and helplessness. Gina forced a smile and asked if I remembered this place. How could I not remember? I remember. But there's no need to reminisce, is there? Seeing her hopeful eyes, I thought long and hard and could only come up with this response. She nodded in disappointment. Colin, standing nearby, grabbed my collar, his face twisted with anger, gritting his teeth. How can you be so heartless? Look at her. I replied with a heavy punch. I've had enough of you, Colin. There was a rush of satisfaction in my heart. It should have happened long ago. I always knew about the feelings between Gina and Colin. As classmates, I witnessed their college romance, their graduation, and their eventual separation due to the challenges of a long-distance relationship. After graduation, I thought Gina and I, like many college friends, would never meet again, like two parallel lines that would never intersect. Until later, when we met by chance in the city, and our paths began to cross, we started as friends. When she argued with someone, I was there for her. When she made up, I was happy for her. Eventually, she went through a breakup. On a rainy night, she cried so hard she could hardly breathe. It was then that I realized she already had a significant place in my heart. I swore to help her move past this relationship and to make her better and better. In this city, we worked hard together, from having nothing to gradually improving our lives. Only then did I dare to confess my feelings to her. When I confessed, she smiled and playfully called my name, saying, I knew you liked me long ago. After getting together, we were like any other couple, eating, watching movies, walking down the streets. We were each other's shelter in stormy times. Moving forward together, we had many unforgettable moments. I once thought Gina and I could love each other forever, until Colin reappeared in her life, maybe. As Colin said, it was because of a job transfer, or perhaps the real reason was that he couldn't let go of Gina and came to the city. Since Colin reappeared, our relationship began to decline, like sliding down a playground slide. But did Gina really find it so hard to let go of Colin? I don't think so. She just enjoyed my love while recklessly reminiscing about the past being abandoned time and again, repeatedly disappointed. My feelings for Gina slid to their lowest point. So, I decided to let go. Because of the big contract I secured last time, I gained recognition from my superiors, and they want to promote me to the company's headquarters in a major city. I once had a similar opportunity for promotion, but I resolutely refused, because I couldn't bear to let Gina go through another long-distance relationship. Even though I knew that even if it were a long-distance relationship, I would do better than Colin, but I still wasn't willing. For every broken part of Gina, I was willing to help her pick up the pieces and mend them. For all the bittersweet experiences she went through, I was willing to cherish them. So, I never told Gina about this, but after all this time, this opportunity has come back to me, and I no longer have a reason to stay in this city. This time, I didn't tell Gina either, there was no need to tell her. But before I left the city, Gina came to find me. She brought two rings, with a somewhat surprised look on my face. She handed me the larger ring and asked me if I could propose to her. She seemed to have prepared for the worst. She said that after this time, she wouldn't bother me anymore. I found it somewhat amusing. Twice, I had wanted to propose to her, but both times, I couldn't because she abandoned me. Once she abandoned me on the cold operating table, and once she abandoned me amid the fireworks I had prepared for her. Twice, I was forgotten on the path to happiness with her. I shook my head. Gina unexpectedly burst into tears, seeing her sobbing appearance. I couldn't feel any sympathy, because I remembered my own repressed emotions. I never easily shed tears in front of Gina, no matter how wronged or upset I felt, I would keep it to myself, never passing my bad emotions onto her. But such repression only brought more unreasonable treatment. That version of myself deserved more sympathy. Gina, let's part on good terms. This time, it's truly a clean break. I moved to another city. In the following years, my career flourished, and I saw a broader world than I had ever seen before. Occasionally, from old college friends, I heard news about Colin and Gina. Colin went bankrupt, hitting rock bottom. He used to love posting suggestive content on social media to provoke me, but now he's nowhere to be seen. I suppose life wore him down to the point where he no longer had the energy. I also learned that Gina had found a new boyfriend, introduced by her family. When I heard this, I was surprised. When she was with me, she was so nostalgic about her past with Colin. But after we broke up, they still didn't end up together. Perhaps that's just how people are always craving what they can't have. 
One calm afternoon, I stood in the tallest office building, holding a cup of coffee, overlooking the city. I received a WeChat message from Gina. She said, I'm getting married. Can we meet one last time? She said, Carlos, I hope you can come. I opened the friend interface and chose to block her. Gina still hadn't changed her ways, and I didn't want to be Colin. 